as I've been working on drone pan, I have been striving to create better panoramas from the imagery taken from the Inspire 1 and the Phantom 3. So this is a panorama from over the weekend. It's actually a residential development of about 1,500 acres. And you can see that Autopano Pro stitched it together really well, but some of the things that we run into is this black sky and some of the Inspire 1 vision sensor showing up in the shot. And let me show you what I'm going to cover in this video. It's the ability to swap out your sky to get a much more vibrant photo. You'll notice that I've done a little bit of color work here at the bottom. And I'm by no means going to take any credit for this technique. And Sergio from our Drone Pan Facebook group was nice enough to put a video together showing how to do this with Photoshop. I will post a link to this below if you're a Photoshop user, but spent a lot of time over the weekend struggling through how to do this with GIMP. And I want to show you guys the technique that I used to pull it off in GIMP. Okay, the first thing we'll do here is we're going to take our output from Autopano. You'll see that this is about a 60 megabyte file. 15,456 pixels by about 5,000 pixels tall. I'll go ahead and open it in GIMP. If you're not familiar with GIMP, I highly recommend checking it out. It's a free and viable alternative to Photoshop. Now sometimes things aren't as easy to do. If you've watched Sergio's video on his Sky Edition, Photoshop makes that very easy. But I'll dive into the steps and show you how to do it in GIMP and ultimately end up with the same result. Now that we've opened our stitch panorama in GIMP, we're going to need to add a sky to it. Now this is a Russian site that Sergio recommended and if you see the link here you can actually go to it and download a zip file of skies. Now actually my internet connection is down so I will post this link below. So I've downloaded the sky zip file, I've unzipped it and I've gone ahead and tried to find a sky that's fairly similar to the sky when I was flying over the weekend. So this photo here, this 2.jpg, is probably the closest. So I'll go ahead and open that. Now with our sky file open, we want to make sure that our widths of images are exact. So I'll go over to the original panorama, go to image, canvas size. We'll see that's 15, 4, 5, 6. So I will take the sky go to image and scale image to 15, 4, 5, 6. Make sure that we do that proportionally and we'll scale that up. Now with our sky scaled up, I'll go to edit copy. We'll go back to our original image and edit paste. You can see our sky pasted in. I've gone ahead and renamed it to sky and then in the back, our original image, I've renamed that to Panorama. Now with my sky layer selected, I'm using my shift key and up arrow on the keyboard just to slowly move my sky into place. I've zoomed out so you can see the sky in position. I've just started it right at the horizon level. And what I'll do next is I'll go to my sky layer and right click and then we'll add a layer mask. And for that mask, we want to select white, full opacity, and we will hit add. You'll know that by seeing this little icon here to the right of your layer. The next step is, and this is the one that took me a while to figure out, we'll use the blend tool. And for this, we want to leave the mode at normal. And we will select foreground to transparent and leave the defaults alone. Now you guys can experiment with all sorts of different settings. I just want to show you the basic methods so that you can work from it. Now with our blend tool settings in place, we'll just start at the edge of our sky. We'll drag upwards. I'll go a little bit over halfway and then we'll let the blend tool kick into play. And don't be alarmed if this takes a little bit. Once again, we're working on a huge file here, so applying that blend will take a little bit. And you can see 
the result of that. We have a nice transition from our sky to the sky that we downloaded. Now, that might look a little bit abrupt going from white to that blue. So you can always have more of your image start down here and do a blend over a longer amount of time. And this is the original version that we're looking at in PanoTour and our modified one with the downloaded sky. Now I did do a little color work on the image, but the key here is to take note of the sky. And just once again, this is our final result as shown in the PanoTour viewer. And we'll go ahead and just take a quick look at the previous version with no modifications. So that sky edition is really useful. I know this was a lengthy video, but I wanted to share that. It's definitely helped improve the overall quality of my panoramas and hope that you guys can be producing the same. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.